this is what I added to our list, the cheek implants. Sure. And I know you have more experience uh, with this than I do, because it came up today. I had a video consult with someone for a hair transplant. Yeah. And then they started asking me towards the end about cheek implants. I didn't think really that she needed it, a uh, young, young person. And I thought there was really good cheek volume, but they wanted to tell them life is going to suck the first few weeks. Yes, life will, <laughs> won't be great in during recovery. So they were specifically pointing to kind of the sub malar area, sort of medial. And I felt like there was really good volume overall throughout. And so I was like basically trying to talk them out of it. But then in general, I realized, I mean, you know, cheek implants, I just, I've seen some issues with them, but I, I just, I know you've worked so much in that area. So I want to hear your yeah, thoughts. Yeah, I, um, so in, like when I started out in my uh, oral max um, with the orthognathic surgery, removing jaws around, when you break the jaw at the Lafort one level, you don't really affect the malar projection. So a lot of people who are deficient in their mid face, you know, it'll be their top jaw, but it's not just their top jaw and just advancing their top jaw. It helps, but it doesn't get this area. So a lot of times we would do implants on top of that. And I have done the gamut of stock, med pore, silicone, custom med pore, custom silicone. I think they represent a really good option, to be honest with you. I think they're pretty easy to get in. I think if you mm -hmm. screw fixate them and they're solid, they're not moving around, you limit a lot of your complications. And I think as long as you don't go crazy with them, you probably will be fine. Now I have moved doing silicone customs for my cheeks. I don't do stocks anymore. Um, yeah, so tell me about that process with the, the custom. Yeah, yeah so uh, the negative is it's expensive, uh, right? I, I wish my wife, she, she left already. <laughs> she knows the pricing on them. But to the surgeon, it's very expensive just to get them. So you, have, you take a CT scan first, uh, but then they're custom fit for your anatomy. So putting them in becomes easier because you know if they lay how they lay on your plan, right? You don't have to visualize everything. So a lot of problems you see with implants sometimes are they're misplaced, right? Like I have people come in for oral surgery that have chin implants that I see on the CT scan. You can kind of see the outline of it and they're like way up above the chin. They're crooked. It's not as easy as just slapping something in there. You're working through a tiny hole. So I think customs just in placement, getting exact placement, exactly what you wanted, I think are awesome. Number two, if it was my body, right? Now it's not like a breast implant. You're trying to, you have, everyone has a unique contour of their bone and their mid face. Right. So I think it is excellent for that because then it fits against your bone. There's no movement. There's less issues with infection mm -hmm. migration, things like that. And then if you screw fixate it, it's, I, I really haven't had many problems with those. They, they, they seem to do very well. And then you could control, well, okay, maybe I just want a little out on the malar portion, but I need more under the nerve. You can have a little cutout custom under the nerve so it fits up under the nerve. You can have it come up and kind of fit up under and add volume up under the eye itself. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think they present good options. But again, it sounds like maybe your patient didn't even actually need them. That's my concern. Sometimes you don't want to overdo it. Yeah. And then I also worry in like a younger patient, there's so much change that occurs in this area in the mid face, you know, as opposed to putting in a chin implant, there's not as much sort of soft tissue and fat that's changing. Yeah. Um, whereas like in the cheeks, there's just all that descent. There's so much atrophy of fat over time. And I just wonder if like then they have to get a modification to those implants and I mean, getting the good them exactly thing is, right on both you, sides. I guess the good way to look at it is if you did need to do it, it's pretty easy to take out. You know, it's done through an intraoral incision. There's no incision on the face. You honestly just take your two. I normally put two screws so there's no rotational movement to it. You just screw the screws out and pop the implant out. And if you wanted to change your implant or change something with it, that's it. I mean, if you get an infection, it's pretty simple too. Honestly, you just take it out, clean it out, let it chill out, get the infection gone, and then come back and, and get a new one and replace it. Well, you know, you've you've had a lot more experience with that than I have, so I'm just I'm just hesitant with it, and it's not you know. It's, I would it's recommend like, for sure go uh, if you're going to do it. Start out with the custom one because I just think it's easier to get symmetry. And and somebody yeah, who's looking sense. for that, and and everyone has asymmetries if you look very closely. It's a big thing I really try to look at. And it's really fun for me to look at their CT scan and then look at their face and look at the photos mm -hmm. and kind of say like, oh, like, well, that makes sense now. Like, oh, well, maybe their rim's down a little bit on one side or their whole, you know, mandible's canted because their maxilla is like that way. And then, you know, you can camouflage it slightly. You tell me you're not going to get it perfect, but working towards symmetry is always uh, insight some beauty, I think.